Dearly beloved, I want to welcome you to my next video, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be looking at my favorite comic books that feature the death of a character. Now, we can take a pretty lighthearted look at these because most of them come back from the dead pretty shortly after. But let's go ahead and jump right in. First up, we got this Adventure Comics number 462, and as you can tell from the cover, it does feature the death of the Golden Age Batman. This is Batman from Earth 2, the original character that made his premiere in Detective Comics, starred in Batman number 1, fought all those villains in the early days, passes away in this comic book. Now, how many of you collectors have heard the name Bill Jensen before? Probably not very many, but he is the character that kills Batman. He strikes him with some kind of a magical lightning bolt, and it's a little anticlimactic that that's all it took to bring down the original Dark Knight. Let's go ahead and move it on. Next up, we got Age of Ultron number six. And in this one, it deals with time travel, but the long and short of it is Sue Storm, the Invisible Woman, and Wolverine travel back in time to kill Hank Pym before he can create Ultron. And Wolverine goes through with it. It's a pretty graphic scene, but in the end, Wolverine cuts down Hank Pym. It's something to see. Next up, we got Alpha Flight number 12, and this one features the death of Guardian. Now, James Hudson is the, is the character under the mask, and he was trying to get out of his suit. It was after a battle, and it was malfunctioning, and at the last moment, Heather Hudson, his wife, distracts him for just a second, and his suit explodes and kills him. Next up, we got Amazing Spider-Man number 192. And this one features the death of a character named Spencer Smythe, that guy in the green there. He dies of radiation poisoning, and in kind of his last death wish, he puts a trap for J. Jonah Jameson and Spider-Man to try to escape from. And they do, of course, but that Spencer Smythe, the guy who kind of created a lot of the Spider-Slayers in the early days, dies in this comic. Next up, we got The Amazing Spider-Man number 294, and this is part five of Craven's Last Hunt. That storyline that ran through all the Spider-Man titles in the 80s. And at the end of this comic book, Craven the Hunter dies. And if you don't know, spoiler alert, he kills himself. He puts a rifle barrel in his mouth, and it's a pretty graphic scene where he takes his own life. But what a great cover here of Craven and his last appearance on the cover. Till he was brought back. But <laughs> next up is The Amazing Spider-Man number 276. And this one, although he's not on the cover, features the death of a villain called the Human Fly. And it's kind of a silly death. He was uh, shot by the Scourge of the Underworld. Anyway, it's just an interesting fact when one of Spider-Man's rogues passes away. And he does in this comic. Next up, we got Animal Man, number 47. And there was a character who kind of ran through this storyline called Bawana Beast. And in the course of this story, that character, Bawana Beast, passes away. So, just kind of a noteworthy event. Next up, we got The Authority, number 12. And one of the founding members of that team was named Jenny Sparks. And she lived for 100 years, and her time is up in this, the telling of this comic book, and she passes away. It's kind of a heartfelt moment, but she does pass away, and you realize, though, that at the strike of midnight, a new version of Jenny Sparks was born, so it goes full circle. Next up, we got The Avengers Annual 7, and this one is the classic telling of an early battle of all the characters against Thanos, and during the course of the battle, Warlock dies in this one. And it's just a beautiful Jim Starlin drawn and written comic book. And it is one of my favorites. Warlock is such a great hero. And he had a hero's death here. And it was just a great issue. That's the way a hero should go out. Next up, we got the Avengers number 229. And this film features the death of a villain. It's that egghead. And it's kind of interesting. At the end of the comic, he's getting ready to shoot a hero and Hawkeye shoots an arrow down the barrel of his gun, and he pulls the trigger, and it explodes, killing the villain, Egghead. Next up, we got the Avengers number 491, 
or number 76. They were kind of wonky with the numbering during this time period. But this comic features the death of that hero called Jack of Hearts, and he sacrifices himself, and it's just the death of a hero here. I didn't know much about that character, but he does pass away in this one. Next up, we got the Avengers number 500, and this one features the death of two major Avengers, Ant-Man and the Vision, both pass away in this comic book. I mean, they were really trying to topple the apple cart at this time and shake things up, and they succeeded when they killed off two of the characters. And shortly after that, in this Avengers number 502, Hawkeye is killed. They were just bloodthirsty right then. They wanted to shake things up, change the status quo, and they did. I mean, that's three major Avengers over the course of two issues. Brian Michael Bendis was on a killing spree. Next up, we got Avengers number three, and this features the death of Wonder Man. Now, George Perez was drawing this, and Wonder Man was kind of an Ionic-based hero. I never understood how his powers worked exactly when he was in that energy form, but during the course of this comic book, he dies. And Wonder Man is a character who seems to die a lot, so it didn't really make that big of an impact. But Wonder Man does die in that one. Next up, we got Batman number 428, and this is the infamous issue where Jason Todd dies. The Joker is ultimately responsible for his demise. But in the previous issue, they had two phone numbers in the back, and readers could call one or the other number and vote whether or not they wanted Jason Todd, Robin, to live or die. And they voted for him to pass away. An interesting side note is they just printed the version that they had drawn up, where in case the voters decided to keep Robin alive, they were going to run that one. So it's kind of an interesting take. And ultimately, Jason Todd did come back as the Red Hood or whatever. Apparently, a Lazarus pit brought him back. But anyway, next up is Blackest Night number one. And in this comic, the Guardians of the Universe, those that are responsible for the Green Lantern, the power battery, are killed in this one. And this series has a lot of deaths in it. We're going to take a look at a couple more issues. But in this one, the Guardians of the Universe are killed. Next up, we got Blackest Night number two. And in this one, Aqualad, who is also called Tempest from time to time, is killed. And it's always a sad thing when uh, there's a death of a character, and he does have a pretty a tragic death in this one. But again, Aqualad passes away in this comic. Next up, we got Blackest Night number eight. And in this one, Necron and Mera are two characters who both die. And it's interesting to see how they go. And like I said, this Blackest Night really did lead to the dying of a lot of characters. And then they'd come back as evil versions and kill other people. It was a twisted series. Next up, we got Blackest Night Titans number one. And this is kind of an interesting one because a character called Hawk, who's famous from Hawk and Dove, comes back. And he was a male character. But in the interim, a female lead had taken on the mantle of Hawk. And the male version, the old one, evil one, kills the new female version. So it's kind of a, a, a character killing themselves, but uh, they do do it in this comic book. Next up, we got Captain America number 254. And this one features the death of not only Baron Blood, that vampire uh, villain right there, but a hero called Union Jack. And he was kind of the British version of Captain America back in World War II. And he passes away in this comic, and it is a tragic death of a hero. But I love that cover, done by John Byrne. And finally, we've got Captain America number 285. And this one features an, the death of another kind of Captain America-like hero called The Patriot. His name is Jeffrey Mace, and he dies of cancer in this one. And it is the sad ending of an older hero. Next up, we got Civil War number one. And this is another one of those series that killed off a lot of characters. And in this one, a couple members of the New Warriors are killed off. Night Thrasher, Cobalt Man, and Namorita all die in this comic book. They're killed in an explosion by Nitro, that same villain that was responsible for Captain Marvel getting his cancer and passing away. But he killed a bunch of people in an explosion by a school that set off this Civil War series. And in Civil War number four, 
the character of Goliath is killed. Apparently, some of the heroes are trying to wrangle in some other heroes, and they bring in a clone of Thor, and he kind of goes crazy and kills Goliath. It is a graphic scene, and it was just a surprising death. It really did shock me to see that character mowed down by Thor. Next up, we got Civil War number five, and in this one, two pseudo-villains get killed by the Punisher. Jack-O-Lantern and the Jester both die by Frank Castle's hand, and they have some graphic deaths. I mean, when the Punisher lays down his punishment, it is final. Next up, we got Countdown to Infinite Crisis, and this was kind of a prelude to that Crisis series, and in this one, Blue Beetle is shot in the head by Maxwell Lord, and it is just kind of an unceremonious death, and it was shocking, and it kicked off a lot of events in this Crisis series. Next up, we got Crisis on Infinite Earths number one, and on this first lead-off issue, all of the occupants of Earth 3 die. Now, that's the planet where the evil versions live, Ultraman and Superwoman, that kind of reverse planet that is an evil mirror, dies in this comic book. Next up, we got Crisis on Infinite Earths number seven. And this one is famous because the original Supergirl dies. And this has become an iconic cover done by George Perez. It's one of my favorites, and it is a tragic death of a major hero. Next up, we got Crisis on Infinite Earths number eight, and everyone knew this was coming. It's the famous death of the Flash, Barry Allen. And I think it's a shame that they didn't leave that character dead. They had the perfect person to carry on the mantle and continue his legacy in Wally West, but they did end up bringing him back. But he died in this comic book due to the Speed Force, or joining the Speed Force. Next up, we got Crisis on Infinite Earths number nine. And on this one, Aqua Girl and one version of Lex Luthor die. Brainiac kills Lex Luthor, and Aqua Girl drowns in this poisoned water by chemo. Anyway, they do. there are two passings at least in that comic book. Next up is Crisis on Infinite Earths number 10, and in this one, two villains pass away, Icicle and Mirror Master. Now, Mirror Master was one of the main rogues of The Flash, and he does pass away in this comic book along with Icicle. Next up, we got Crisis on Infinite Earths number 12, and this was a series that was known for killing off characters. And in this one, there's a list of characters that die. Dove from Hawk and Dove, Green Arrow, Clayface 2, Huntress, Robin, Wonder Woman, the original, who's turned back into Clay, all die in this comic book. Now take that with a grain of salt. A lot of those deaths were retroactively done away with, or different versions were brought back, the history was rewritten, but Crisis on Infinite Earths did ultimately lead to the passing of a lot of characters. Next up, we got Daredevil 181, and this Frank Miller penned and drawn comic book is famous for the death of Elektra. Now, that is a misnomer. She did come back, and it was an upsetting death to me, because they proved again and again that she did die. They made a whole graphic novel, Elektra Lives, where they proved that she was dead, and yet she came back. So I've never really understood that passing of Electra, but Bullseye kills her in this one. Next up, we got Daredevil number 233. And this was part of that Frank Miller written storyline called Born Again. And they introduced this villain here called Nuke. He was had mental problems, but he was kind of a super soldier, and he was manipulated by the Kingpin, and he met his ultimate fate in this comic. Next up, we got Daredevil number five, and this one features the death of Karen Page. Now, it was written by Kevin Smith, drawn by Joe Quesada, and it really is a tragic death of that character. Karen Page was a girlfriend of Daredevil. They had a long history together. She kind of had a downfall. She got into drugs and the adult film industry, but she redeemed herself. She wanted another try at a relationship with Matt Murdock, and she was about to profess her love for him and she was killed by Bullseye. And it's a tragic, sad death. In my opinion, it's one of the better deaths in comic books. We miss Karen Page. Next up, we got Daredevil number seven. And on the opposite end of that one is Mysterio's death in this one. It's kind of gone down in history as one of the most disappointing deaths in comic books. He just kind of gives up and commits suicide at the end because he knows that ultimately he didn't hurt Daredevil with his scheming. And that's how he dies. 
Next up, we got Daredevil number 40, and this is the tragic death of a hero called White Tiger. There's a well-written story by Brian Michael Bendis where it involves the White Tiger being accused of a murder that he didn't commit. And things are not going good in the trial. Daredevil, Matt Murdock, is his lawyer, and he ends up dying because of how the trial is going, and it is the tragic death of the White Tiger in this comic book. Next up, we got Day of Vengeance number six. And in this one, Shazam dies. Apparently, the storyline involves getting rid of all of the magical beings in the DC universe here. And in this one, Shazam is killed. It is a strange thing to see that powerful of a character getting killed. Next up, we got Fantastic Four, number 381. And this one was supposed to feature the deaths of Doctor Doom and Reed Richards. And they retroactively said, oh, at the last moment, they were transported to another dimension or some convoluted reason why they didn't die. But they presented it in this comic book as if it was the actual death of Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic. Next up, we got the Fantastic Four, number 561. And in this one, there's a future version of Sue Storm, the Invisible Woman. And she dies in this one. She comes back, and a younger version of Sue Storm witnesses her death. And it's like, yeah, it's a weird thing. Anyway, she goes to the funeral of her future self, which is a weird concept when you think about it. Next up, we got 52, week 3. And in this one, there's a character called Terra Man. And he dies in this one. He's a villain, and he thinks he's buddy-buddy with Black Adam. And that's a lesson, not to get too close to that character, because Black Adam ends up ripping him in half, and it is a gory death. All right, next up we got Final Crisis number one. And in this one, Orion dies and the Martian Manhunter. And it is a gruesome death of that Martian Manhunter. He is burned, and that's his one weakness and fire brings him down. It doesn't really show too much of it, but what a horrific way to go. Next up is Final Crisis Revelations number one. And that Final Crisis was another series that did ultimately lead to the death of a number of characters. And in this one, Dr. Light is killed. And that character ultimately meets their fate. But anyway, this was my first part of deaths in comic books. And I presented them all in alphabetical order so that no deaths would get more weight than any others. But I hope you join me for my next part. We'll continue on my series of death in comic books. Thanks for joining me. Have a great night.